You know, one term we've been hearing a lot lately is Islamophobia. And the people that love to use that term, Islamophobia, love to liken it to racism. Well, I want to make a video today talking about how ridiculous the whole idea of Islamophobia is, much less likening it to racism. I just don't like this whole idea, this whole mindset that somehow if you are opposed to Islam, you're wrong. Therefore, you're fearful, you're phobic, you're Islamophobic. And the idea of trying to link it to being a racist, well, that's even more stupid because Islam is not a race. It's not a nationality. It's nothing like that. It is a religion. And since it's a religion, it's nothing more than an idea. And you're allowed to have problems with ideas, especially if it's a bad idea. And Islam is a bad idea. It is a bad mindset, if you ask me. Most religions are, if you believe in every aspect of them. I mean, look at Christianity. Christianity has evolved a lot with the world. It's tried to become less and less offensive. If most people had to believe everything that was in the Old Testament, people would be like, Ugh, God, no, I'm not believing that. That's awful. That's horrible. But like I say, it has evolved with the times trying to be less offensive. I'm no fan of Christianity, but at least they try. Islam, however, does the opposite. Instead of trying to evolve with the world, they try to take the world and devolve it back to their level. They will not evolve. They will not assimilate. And that's the biggest problem I have with Islam. And that does not make me phobic. That means I have a problem with that idea. And sometimes ideas are just bad. Hitler had a lot of ideas and we opposed those ideas. We stood up against them. That did not make us Nazi-phobic. And it definitely didn't make us racist against Germans. It meant we thought someone had some bad ideas that were dangerous and we opposed them. That made us people that were willing to stand up for what they thought was right against people we thought were wrong, even when they were very powerful people that we thought were wrong. We didn't worry about offending what they thought was right. We worried about doing what we thought was right and stopping them from imposing their will on other people. So people who have legitimate issues with Islam are no more Islamophobic than people that didn't like Hitler are Nazi-phobic. And you know, it definitely doesn't make you racist. If you have problems with an idea as disgusting as what I think Islam is in its purest form, that doesn't make you fearful. That doesn't make you cowardly. That makes you someone who's paying attention, if you ask me. And being shamed by the media and people that want to stand in the way of actually doing something, that doesn't make any sense to me. And I don't think it should work. I don't think you should even be allowed to use the term Islamophobic. They make up their own term to shame people who just have a problem with something that's real and something that's bad. Now, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you just don't care about these refugees. You don't care about them at all. You want children to die. No, I don't want children to die. I have great sorrow in my heart for these people that are born into these conditions, the children. But once they reach the age of reason, I have less compassion for them. And let's remember, most of these people that are now refugees up until recently were actually willing participants in a society that violently discriminated against people that they did not feel were pious enough. These people were okay with gays being violently killed, you know, non-Muslims being violently killed. They were okay with people being mutilated because they, you know, defaced something that has to do with Allah. They were okay with that kind of discrimination. It was only when a very militant faction of their own group decided that, hey, you know what? You guys aren't, you know, religious enough. You're not pious enough. So therefore, we have a problem with you now. That's when they suddenly became victims. To me, that's like saying if four skinheads go out all weekend long beating up minorities and then on the second day, they find out that one of the four skinheads is half Jewish and the other three skinheads beat him up. Am I supposed to feel sorry for the fourth skinhead that was half Jewish? No, you were participating in this. You were working with these people until they found a reason to dislike you. So I do not see you as a victim. I see you as getting what you deserved. Karma's a bitch sometimes and that's what that is. Now, do I want to see something done for these people, even though I believe they created the circumstance they're fleeing from? Yes, I do, especially for the children. But what I want to do is encourage places like Saudi Arabia, Turkey, etc., to help these people. People in their own backyard that have all the money, all the resources, all the land they could possibly need who are doing nothing for these people. These people are supposed to be our allies and our friends, and they're right there in that yard and not helping out their neighbor. I have a problem with that. And, you know, I've got no problem with sending humanitarian aid over there from us to them to help them and make sure they're not being discriminated against or treated poorly over there by their fellow, you know, citizens of that area. But I do have a problem with bringing them from there to here. Why would we want to dislocate these people? Why would we want to pull them away from their heritage and their land? Let's try to fix the problems so they can go back. 
I know a lot of people say, well, let's bring them here to America and they'll assimilate and become Americans. Well, that idea isn't working out too well for Europe. So I think you should uh, look into how well that's doing over there before you think that's going to happen. And I, for one, don't think we should shove democracy and America down people's throats. If they want to live there, let them live there. Let them suffer the consequences of their own actions. Help them if we can. But bringing them here when they actively want to kill us and our children and civilian targets are their main interest, that's not a good idea. Because all it takes is a couple out of every 100,000 to get over here to cause massive damage. So since we can't do background checks on these people because no records exist, we have to do as much as we can for them over there without endangering ourselves. If someone comes to my door dirty and hungry and needing help, I'll help them. I'm not going to let them sleep in my living room while they got an axe on their shoulder. Not going to do that. That doesn't mean I won't give them food and maybe even some money to go to a hotel, but I'm not bringing them in my house where they endanger my family. So call me callous, call me a jackass, call me a hateful gun owner. I don't like the term Islamophobia because I don't think Islamophobia can even be a real thing. But you know something that is a real thing? Islamic apologists. Those people are real and they're doing nothing but harm, so they need to shut up. If the news wants to shame someone, those are the people they need to start shaming.